Welcome to a new week of learning, kiddos. Um, we're going to continue with the different properties this week. We've already gone over the distributive property. You guys have done wonderfully with it. Um, it's the one that we'll probably use the most um, in our algebra concepts, and it's one of the harder ones. So um, that's why I always start with that guy and we start practicing. But there are many more. As you can see, if you have your notes in front of you, hopefully you do, ready to be filled out along um, with me as I go on. So you're gonna need to be able to recognize these properties when you see them and know how to use them. Here's the really good news though. You've probably already been, have been using these properties for a few years now. There's not a lot of new concept here. It's really just a matter of now we're going to assign a specific name to what you've already been um, doing or already known how to do. So please make sure you do follow along and fill out your notes as we go. Uh, you will be able you know, to use this chart to help you as you're moving forward, not on an assessment, but any type of practice activity until you get really familiar with the different properties. So let's get started. Um, at the top, I have um, the commutative property here in the first one and the second one. And the commutative property can happen with, op with addition and it can happen with multiplication. And it's a very simple concept. You probably already know that when we are adding and when we are multiplying, the order that we perform those operations does not matter. So for instance, over on the right, I have the for the commutative property of addition, we are saying, six plus three. Well, I think you would agree that I could also say three plus six and I will come up with the same value. So the commutative property says it does not matter what order we add in, we are still gonna get the same result. The same with multiplication. I can multiply four times five or I can multiply five times four and I will get the same value. So commutative property says the order that we do perform the operation does not matter. So we're moving down to the associative property. Again, the associative property works with both addition and multiplication. So think about what it means to associate yourself with someone. When you associate with someone, you're kind of grouping yourself up with that person or that group. And that's what the associative property does. The associative property says when we're adding or multiplying, the way we group things together also does not matter. So for instance, look at my examples for addition. I have here three plus four plus seven, and I've put parentheses around the three plus the four, and we know according to order of operations, we would need to add three and four first, and then we would add our seven on. However, if we did those operations in a different order, grouping together different numbers first, would it make a difference? And the answer is no way, it would not. I could put three plus four plus seven, and I could put my parentheses around the four and the seven, adding those together first because they're in parentheses and then the three. And I would get the very same result as I did on the left-hand side of my equal sign. So grouping does not matter when we're adding. Grouping also does not matter when we're multiplying. I've got parentheses around my two times my five, and then I'm showing that I'm multiplying times eight. I could also get all three of those down again and group the five and the eight together first do five times eight, and then multiply that value times two, and I will get the very same amount. So in review, I've got commutative property for adding and multiplying, where we can do them in any order. The order does not matter. I have associative property for both adding and multiplying, where we can group them together in any way, and the answer will always be the same. Let's move down to the identities. I've got two identities, and again, we're dealing with addition and multiplication. But this word identity, think about what that means. What is your identity? It's basically who you are. So the additive identity is zero. That means 
when we take zero and add it to a number, the number gets to stay who it is. It does not change the number. So the number keeps its identity. For instance, 10 plus zero, I know that's excruciatingly easy, is 10. And what just took place there is that adding zero to that number, the number got to stay the same or keep its identity. So that's the additive identity. Zero is what we add to values for them to keep the same value. There's also a multiplicative identity, that word right here, multiplicative, and that just means with multiplication. What do we multiply a number by to, for that number to keep its own identity? Well, that's one. Any number that I multiply times one, for instance, the five times the one, gets to keep its identity. So we have an identity in addition, and that's zero, and we have an identity in multiplication, and that is one. Either way we use our operation, adding on zero or multiplying by one, we are, the number value that we started with gets to stay the same. And that's what the identities are. Then we've got one more new property in your chart. Um, again, like everything else, I'm not telling you anything new or teaching you a concept that you didn't already know or practice. I'm simply just giving you a name to, I, to associate with that particular um, process. So the last one we have is called the multiplicative property of zero. And this is again something you already know that any number multiplied by zero will simply give you a result of zero. So in our example, if I take 15 and I multiply it times zero, I get a value of zero. That is the multiplicative property of zero taking action. Any number times zero will give you zero. And then lastly on your chart kiddos, I do have distributive property just because it is one of the properties that we need that we're responsible for. You already know how it works. And basically we're, it means that we're taking that number on the outside of our parentheses and we're multiplying it times everything on the inside. And you've already been practicing that and, and being a rock star with the distributive property. So just as an um, example to reinforce, we're taking this four and multiplying times X and we're taking our four and multiplying times seven. So four X plus 28 is what is the equivalent expression of, of that guy. And then the same with the bottom, we've got three terms on the inside. So that means our X on the outside is being multiplied three times. So X times negative three Y is negative three XY. X times positive seven is positive seven X. And then x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared. So next up, we're going to go down to the bottom of your notes and practice identifying uh, what property is being used in each one of our examples here. And um, again, the process of understanding the property is not at all my concern. I know you all are very capable of understanding. It's more just paying attention sometimes to the details and make to make sure that you really are identifying the correct property. And how we're going to do that is we're going to take a look always at the left hand side of our equal sign and see what changes were made to turn it into the right hand side. So in number one, 75 plus 25, what happened over on the right hand side? What changes were made? Well, we're adding, but we flipped the order. We changed the order in our addition. So which one of our properties says that we can do that, that we can add in any order and the order does not matter? I wanted to say to kiddos, feel free at any time to pause the video. If you'd like to try yourself before I give away the answer, um, during this first practice to take a look at the chart and figure it out, please feel free to pause at any time. So if you have taken a look at it, your chart, hopefully you are seeing that it is the commutative property. Of addition and a lot of times I'm going to be um, shortening our words or abbreviating because it's going to 
gets kind of a long and long-winded if we write them all out. Moving over to number two. Let's look and see what's different about the left and the right. I have two that's being multiplied times the parentheses three times four. So that means I have to do three times four first and then multiply by two. And what changed as we got to the right-hand side? Well, the two and the three are being multiplied first this time and then times the four. So what property tells us that we are allowed to group them differently and they'll still come out um, to be the same value? Well, that would be the associative property and we're using multiplication. Let me take this time to comment one more time about abbreviations and shortening our properties. As you're watching me write, please understand why we're not ever going to abbreviate the associative property. You may not. You must write it out. And if you didn't catch on to that, why I'm saying that, you might want to rewind or back up the video just slightly and try and take another look. So the associative property, we're always going to write out the whole word. You may not abbreviate. All the other properties, it's fine to abbreviate. So the associative property of multiplication. Associative prop mult. Going on to number three, I have 14, and I'm multiplying it times one, and then I see over here that it stayed 14. So that means it kept its identity. So the answer here, the property being used, is the multiplicative identity. Number four, I start out with P. P gets multiplied times zero and it turns into zero. So some people might get confused and call that the multiplicative identity, but nope, P did not keep its identity. P turned into zero. So we call that the mul whoop, I keep doing that. The um, multiplicative property of zero. Moving on to number five, this guy should look familiar. We have a five on the outside of parentheses and it's showing on the right that it was multiplied times x and it was multiplied times two to turn into that 10. So that, you all know, is the distributive property. Number six, we have g and g stayed g over on the right, it was added to zero. So it was added to zero, it got to keep its identity, therefore we call that the additive identity. Number seven, this one gets people every year. I want you to take a good look. So many times I have kiddos shoot up their hands in the air when we're in class together and I put this in front of them because they're certain they know that this is the associative property. Why? Because there's parentheses involved. But this is one of those tricks that I said, you gotta pay attention to details. What is really changing from the left-hand side to the right-hand side? It has nothing to do with grouping. What does it have to do with? On the left-hand side, I am grouping together my seven and my k, which are being multiplied. I have to do that first. On the right-hand side, I'm grouping the seven and the k again. I did not change what is being grouped together, but what did change? Over on the left, it was seven times k. Over on the right, it was k times seven. So this is the order that is changing, not the grouping that is changing. So this is not associative property, but the commutative property because it has to do um, with order. And we're doing multiplication. So commutative property of multiplication. And then again, a repeat for number eight. We have seven on the outside of parentheses. It's showing me that it's being multiplied times six, which is the first term inside. And it's being multiplied um, times negative three, which is the second term inside. So we are showing the distributive property here.